It's Monday. It's June 19th. And the word of the day is nerdle, which means that perfect wave shape of toothpaste from the ad on TV that forever eludes me. Huh. It also means obnoxious deflection bunting in uh, British baseball. Used in a sentence, boo nerdle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who'd have thought there'd be something nerdy about a sport that genuinely uses a mathematical formula to work out who wins in the event of bad weather. That is a real thing <laughs> that do. we do in cricket. It's wow. insane. <laughs> I have no illusions. I'm Michael Marshall. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from the States and Kingdom of Unity, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Fox News wades into a Twitter fight. The party's finally over for Boris Johnson. And Republicans buy something even dumber than Donald Trump's innocence. <laughs> but first, <laughs> the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Michael Marshall. Gentlemen, if we do like a buddy tattoo day, I was thinking about this. Ooh. What are y'all getting? I-, I feel like we should all get I Heart Zip Lining. <laughs> um, either that or I think I'm going to get a QR code um, that when you scan it it takes you directly to uh, qedcon.org forward slash tickets um, oh there you go sorry Andy just insisted that we got to get, get the plugs in early this week just in case people stop listening by the outro so really oh, front load them front load the cool. plugs for QED <laughs> what, sorry one more time what was the URL that you were going to get a tattoo of that is Mark? qedcon.org forward slash tickets very affordable very affordable QED tickets £149 for the weekend £100 29 pounds for concessions very very cheap in today's market okay that's a long tattoo but cool yeah <laughs> also the very best skeptical conference in the game in our lead story tonight trump was arraigned on a 37 count federal tuesday and even though you knew that and i knew you knew it you still wanted to hear me say it as much as i wanted to fucking say it so i said it how many counts was it? 37. 37? 37. That's, That's the most a, random number. Right, it, so it, many counts. Yeah. That is a no, lot of counts. Yeah. No, those charges include 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information, three counts of withholding or concealing documents in a federal investigation, two counts of making false statements, and one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice. Again, that total is 37. We got to do like a partridge in a pear tree <laughs> version of all those. We, we got to really make should. that a song. Yeah, yeah. And and that indictment also includes, by the way, some of the most damning photographic evidence in the history of photographs, proving beyond any reasonable doubt that Trump literally reserved a lower level of security for the nation's most sensitive secrets than I have for my Atari games. <laughs> <laughs> no one would be furious if somebody put All one of his Atari games bathroom in a shit. box like Jesus. that. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's crazy. Have you, like... I looked at three of those pictures. It looks like dry storage in the back of a TGI Fridays, but yeah. with like nuclear codes in little boxes. It's insane. <laughs> well, it does, but even that's not fair because these boxes are like inches away from the toilet in Trump's Mar-a-Lago bathroom. Yeah. There is nothing dry about this storage. <laughs> okay. Well, li- listen, I, I get what you're saying, but if you've ever been in the back of a TGI Fridays, it's not dry. <laughs> okay, okay. There's that's, some that's sloppy heages happening at all moments <laughs> in those dry storage spots. But honestly, the only thing preventing drunken Floridians from being able to nuke Cuba was that the cords were obscured by pea stains. That was right. the only yeah. thing holding it back. <laughs> no okay. kidding. I saw one, I think, Twitter remark about the bathroom shot. And it was like, I get that I'm focusing on the wrong thing here, but he's a billionaire and he can't get a decorative box to put over the Kleenexes. It's just <laughs> raw dogging the counter of the sink like that with the Kleenex box. Come on. No, of course, the lock her up crowd for whom Hillary's technical but secure mishandling of non-classified government communications was the damnable trespass that justified every excess of Trump's presidency. We're appalled at the thought of a president allowing his chief political rival to be criminally charged. Uh, tr- Trump's rivals for the 2024 GOP nomination universally condemned the prosecution as politically motivated. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy sprung to Trump's defense by pointing out that... <laughs> Real quote here, bathroom doors do lock. And (laughs) and Fox News read a chyron under a video of Biden that read actual quote, 
wannabe dictator speaks at White House after having his political rival arrested, end quote. Yeah, also known as winning. But <laughs> that's winning. It's got to be embarrassing for Republicans getting outplayed by a senile wannabe like this. That hurts. <laughs> uh, and that defense from McCarthy is amazing because, like, yes, bathroom doors lock. But only from the inside. Right, they don't yes. lock from the outside. Thank Does he you. think the classified documents locked themselves in there to keep <laughs> themselves safe? And presumably, you know, if anybody came knocking, the boxes would just have to cough to let them know that the right, bathroom yeah, was occupied. That's occupied. what they were planning. Somebody's in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nuclear codes. Shut up. Now, for his part. Trump was equal parts outraged and opportunistic, right? He launched into his familiar refrains of witch hunt in fundraising emails. His website also offered an I Stand With Trump t-shirt for free with a $47 donation. Um, and on the <laughs> evening of his arraignment, he held a fundraiser in Bedminster, New Jersey, where he delivered a speech that was equal parts the worst thing a president can do is politically motivated prosecution and if reelected, I'll do the biggest politically motivated prosecution ever. He literally promised he would, quote, appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America. And then when he realized that his supporters looked kind of nervous about that prospect, he added, <laughs> quote, Joe Biden. I'm talking about Joe, Joe Biden. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, I'm going to arrest the corrupt president. You know, the old white guy, the one who often doesn't make a lot of sense when he talks, um, comes across kind of creepy around younger women. Um, he's got a son who famously does way too many drugs. <laughs> Why do you all still look at me so nervous here? <laughs> <laughs> So my, my favorite detail of the post-arraignment self-pity extravaganza, though, came before the Bedminster event. And it wasn't the fact that it happened on the day before his birthday and his wife was so conspicuously absent that Fox News misidentified his deputy communications director as Melania <laughs> when they came by at his motorcade. Uh, but to be fair, Trump has also tried to use the I thought she was Melania defense. So I get oh, it. I can no, understand that's fair. that. Yeah, right. They're just towing the line. Um, no, my favorite part came afterwards uh, when he dragged a bunch of reporters and supporters to a famous Cuban place nearby called Versailles, and then he yelled, <laughs> food for everyone on camera, posed for a few selfies, and then left without paying for any fucking food. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> buy <laughs> shit for anyone. No. Oh, he's so cheap. Just money for everyone at mastercard.com. Yes. You just sign up <laughs> for a car, and they just give you money. So he's a super wealthy, powerful person hanging around Versailles, telling people they should eat, but not giving them anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> History, it never repeats, but it does often rhyme. Doesn't it, though? Yeah, no, we might as well have said, let them eat flan. I, 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 also, I, I should also note that Trump was in something of a scramble to even meet the minimum requirement of having an attorney qualified to try a case in the state of Florida present for his arraignment. Uh, two of his lawyers quit as soon as the sealed indictment was announced. And while they haven't officially said why they left, we got news stories immediately afterwards about how Trump refused even the most basic efforts to uh, avoid this indictment from those lawyers that weren't, you know, cooperating witnesses for the prosecution. <laughs> um, incidentally, one of those lawyers would go on to also quit from Trump's defamation suit against CNN for equally mysterious reasons a couple of days later. Is there a single lawyer left in America who will take him on as a client by this point? Like, what's that guy who gave Alex Jones's phone to the prosecution? What's he doing now? Is he busy? Could Trump get him in? <laughs> well, he's definitely not busy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look, far be it from me to be the optimist here, but there was a time not so long ago when the naysayers were absolutely sure that they would never actually investigate Trump's crimes. And after that, there was a long period where the naysayers were absolutely certain that they would never actually indict him for his crimes. And now the naysayers are absolutely certain that they would never actually throw him in prison for his crimes. And look, eventually the naysayers will be right. Right? That's the just the na nature of escalated naysaying. But given what we've seen so far, what evidence Jack Smith included in his indictment, and what a feeble excuse for a defense Trump and his lawyers have offered so far, I'm at least hopeful enough to balk at the word never. And keep it like this motherfucker just turned 77. At that age, 30 days could be a life sentence. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And just one other detail. Thanks to the law that he signed in 2018, <laughs> hoping to go after Hillary at that moment. 
Trump's charges might include a felony that gets up to five years instead of a misdemeanor that caps at one year. <laughs> he so signed it. Good. If we were writing this, it's how we'd written it. <laughs> um, and on that note, which I believe may be the highest note this show has ever achieved, we're going to pause for a quick word from this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. As a person who learned about the importance of mental health care way too recently, I'm here to tell you that I missed out on a bunch of units of potential happiness and well-being. If that sounds like you too, therapy might be a good idea. Sometimes it could be something as simple as finding more balance in your life. And therapy can give you the tools you need so you can keep supporting the people you love without neglecting yourself. And BetterHelp is a great way to find a therapist who's right for you. We've had dozens of listeners reach out and tell us they were able to find the help they needed. And that makes us very happy that this is working. It's creating more well-being for people. That's fantastic. BetterHelp is entirely online, convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you could switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Tuck Your Face News. Tucker Carlson and Fox News continued with their extremely messy breakup in the public restaurant of the internet last week. <laughs> And it continued to be delightful to watch. The latest salvo is a strongly worded letter from the Fox News legal team demanding that Tucker stop posting videos for his new show called Tucker on Twitter. Fox is claiming that Tucker is still under contract with them and therefore he's not allowed to produce news content for other serious journalism platforms like Twitter. And see, this is what it looks like when white men fight Tucker. This is what it looks like. <laughs> and we can't look away. It's delightful. Uh, I mean, you're right, but this fight is it's it's like Alien versus Predator in that whoever wins we lose. Except Fox isn't so much the predator as the employer who covered for a bunch of predators for right, a really long yeah, time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I always have said that Fox was the Wayland Yutani of the entertainment business. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so Here's a quick recap of the timeline. Tucker Carlson spent seven years being a giant embarrassment to Fox News and, well, the entire institution of journalism. But Fox News was both of those things already, so they didn't really realize what was happening. I get it. <laughs> Tucker spread so many very obvious lies that attorneys for Fox argued in court at one point that Tucker Carlson tonight was such a ridiculous caricature of news that any lie he told doesn't actually count as defamation because the whole thing's ridiculous and you should know that. And that argument actually worked in a defamation case from 2020. Yeah. No, it's your fault for trusting us was their defense and it was successful. <laughs> and it worked. Hang on a second, though. So if you lie often enough, you become immune from defamation cases. Yes, you do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's pretty smart of you to bring this up on a show where Eli is on vacation because that would have been like, it's like handling a toddler a machine gun. You know, at that yeah. point, you're responsible for what they do with that. Yeah, that's on you. But eventually, with Tucker, the lies got piled up way too high, especially regarding Dominion voting systems. And Fox had to pay Dominion $787.5 million in a settlement to avoid an even bigger consequence of Tucker Carlson and their news team existing. And that's when they pulled him off the air. But his contract is still going until 2025, and it contains some kind of non-compete provision that says he can't appear in other media. So they sent him a letter to that effect, which was labeled not for publication, in all caps. Interesting. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to guess it said something along the lines of, motherfucker, we own you lying so thoroughly that your ass has to sleep in a chair for the next two and a half years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, according to Tucker, he will not be silenced. Yeah, he will. And he's going to keep making his 10-minute squinty monologues about the real issues facing the average American, like UFOs and globalist bankers and... Cartoon candy mascots not being sexually pleasing to him personally as much as they used to be, which is a big problem. 
And according to his legal team, Fox News is actually in breach of the contract. And that's because they didn't prevent Tucker's horribly embarrassing text messages from being disclosed. Like, for example, alluded to it before, when he praised white men for how they fist fight more honorably than the other races (laughs) in his head. Jesus. His lawyers are also arguing that his Twitter show is free speech protected by the First Amendment. Oh, so I, contracts don't count because of that. Oh, if you that's paid to talk, the argument from them yeah, too. That's... So, uh, also, Tucker's latest video is just thirty minutes of him defending Fox News for calling Biden a dictator, including actually playing clips of Fox News in the video. So maybe now he's back at believing that contracts do count, but sackings don't. Maybe that's yeah, where he yeah. is now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he's a little confused. So. We'll see what happens as the idiot fight between Fox and Tucker unfolds. In the meantime, Tucker's going to keep making videos on Twitter. He's up to four episodes now. They're fun. In his commentary about the Trump indictment last week, Tucker made the argument that everything is classified in Washington. So the entire case against Trump doesn't count. Oh. It's just, it's all classified. Oh, I got you. So that must up. have been why he was so dismissive of the complaints about Hillary's emails. I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember that. I remember that. Mm-hmm. And in party duper news, Boris Johnson is a liar. Uh, And that's not just me saying that. Uh, It's not just his former editor at the Times newspaper who fired him in 1988 for lying about interviews. It's not just them saying it. And it's not just his former Tory leader, Michael Howard, saying it because he fired him in 2004 for lying about an affair. And it's not just his ex-wife, Allegra (laughs) Moston Owen, saying it, who left him in 1993 for lying about an affair. And it's not just his other ex-wife, Marina Wheeler, saying it, who left him in 2020 for lying about an affair that he had while she was having treatment for cervical cancer. Um, You see, when your story is about the times that Boris Johnson has been publicly rebuked for being a liar, you've got to get really specific, like very specific. Sure. Yeah, to to get the truth out of Boris Johnson, you have to ask the door guard next to him what he would say. (laughs) (laughs) Boris Johnson's like, I gotta hire sometimes liars for the door. This is crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Why do I stand by the door? I shouldn't stand by the door either way. This is weird. So uh, I shouldn't be one of the upside down guys. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm actually referring to the events of just this week where an inquiry into his handling of COVID found that he repeatedly lied to Parliament, including about all the parties that he had in Downing Street during lockdown at the very height of lockdown restrictions. And also about how he sat in Parliament saying that those parties had all obeyed all of the rules, uh, even though he knew for sure that they definitely didn't. He even promised that his advisers had told him that all of the rules were followed at all times, despite the fact that, as we now know, and let's face it, we fucking well knew then, he'd right. been told the exact opposite, that we're not following the rules. Which is so amazingly stupid because they're parties. Mm. Part, like parties don't just have witnesses; they are witnesses. You put enough witnesses together, it's a fucking party. How the fuck do you think you're going to get away with that? Yeah. Hey, you think lots of people were party to the fuck? Okay, <laughs> okay, I heard it. They were party to the party. Well, I don't know if you guys even saw just yesterday a video emerged of one of the parties in which the person taking the video says it's okay to film this as long as you don't stream it or anything because we're breaking the rules right now. We're breaking oh, the lockdown geez. rules. <laughs> filmed yourself admitting the crime <laughs> and you still thought you'd get away with this unbelievable um, will you hold this hot mic for me for a second i'll be right back just hold on <laughs> so the committee found that boris was responsible for repeated contempts of parliament including trying to delay disrupt intimidate and undermine the entire inquiry and i think it's the only time in history boris johnson and responsible have ever been used in the same breath it's the one time that works yeah no i feel like he and intimidate have a similar relationship but i like admittedly i'm mostly basing that on the hair so, <laughs> it's very silly. so his attempts to squirm out of accountability here have just genuinely been stunning at one point he was ordered to hand over unredacted whatsapp messages to the inquiry so they could see what had been said and he refused to hand over the unredacted messages To the point where he then had his office, the cabinet office, threaten to take the inquiry to court over demanding the messages. In case that's not clear, that means the government (laughs) convened an inquiry into Johnson's behaviour and then the government 
tried to sue that inquiry for insisting on investigating <laughs> Johnson's <laughs> behavior. We need to sue ourselves. This is ridiculous. Okay, so, no, I, but honestly, a government official being tasked with proving government officials are corrupt, that has the makings of a very promising farce. That's right? true. That yeah, is fair. absolutely. Or a very accurate documentary about Donald Trump and the inspector general system. <laughs> uh, like, exactly. Yeah, accurate. so a not-so-promising farce as well. <laughs> 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 So, unlike most of Boris's lies, this one actually does come with consequences. And that's something that Boris doesn't have a lot of experiences with. Like, consequences as a concept has been so absent from his life that I think he genuinely believes the official definition of the word consequences is when your latest mistress tells you she's pregnant. Because that's the only time it's come up before. <laughs> Also, you look like Barney Rubble's mugshot right before rehab. Like, something <laughs> really bad is happening, Barney Rubble. So these he's got, you know, he's got a little bit of Gary Busey too. Oh, you know he I mean? does. He sure. does have Gary Busey. Like if you, okay, if you got like Chat GPT to like make you a flip book that would show you Barney Rubble turning into Gary Busey, I feel like the middle one, yes, the there middle would flip, be, is Boris Johnson, Johnson would be in that booklet. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So the UK Standards Committee decided that Boris Johnson's deceptions were so severe that he'd be forced to serve a 90-day suspension from Parliament. And just to be clear, that's pretty unprecedented. Normally, a 10-day suspension for Parliament is a severe punishment. That will actually require a by-election and your job is on the line and the public has to go back to voting on whether you can continue your job or not. So 90 days is a really unprecedented suspension, especially for someone who was actually in charge just nine months ago. You know, he's barely been out of office long enough for him to have two more babies. That's how short a time <laughs> since he's been prime minister. And that was a job that, let's not forget, he had to resign from because it turns out he'd been lying when he said he didn't know that one of his MPs had been sexually harassing people. And he was lying yeah. about that. Well, so, okay, so I admit I am envious of this whole consequence thing that you guys uh, apparently have. But... You have to admit, like, you know, you've been shown to lie about literally everything ever, even when the stakes are life and death in a pandemic, and therefore we don't want you taking part in the highest levels of national governance for it, like, at least a season of Game of Thrones, right? Like, in, in an early season. I'm not talking about when they started breaking shit up at the end. That's the thing, like, even that, like, that 90-day suspension, that would have been seen as a serious punishment if Boris was the kind of MP who even turned up to Parliament regularly anyway, but... Ever since he resigned as PM nine months ago, he's attended less than 28% of the votes, and many of those he's done from proxy when he wasn't even there. He spent 70 days of that time, at least 70 days, out of the country, either on holiday or doing lucrative speeches around the, around the world. So maybe, maybe what happened was he knew that a ban of that length was coming, and he just wanted to preemptively suspend himself for oh, that right. amount of time. time. Maybe that's it. kind of a thing, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's just doing a quarantine for COVID. That's responsible. <laughs> he's quarantining himself away. But as it is, even the punishment of being banned from doing a job he otherwise wasn't doing, even that proved too much for Boris to bear. And last Friday evening... After he knew about the conclusions of the inquiry, but days before the conclusions were made public, he officially resigned as a member of parliament, adding in his resignation speech an ominous, at least for now. What? He's reserving the right to unquit later? What? He, he is, yes. He's saying, I will no longer be a member of parliament for now, but you might be able to elect me again in the future if we find an even safer seat than the one I'm currently in. That's essentially <laughs> what he's doing. Once you forget about how much of a liar I am, I may well be back. Gotcha. Um, and for anyone who is hoping that this is the last we'll have to hear of Boris Johnson, well, on Friday of this week, he was announced as the columnist for the Daily Mail, their new uh, mm. flagship columnist for the Daily Mail newspaper, where what? he's going to earn a six-figure salary, at least until about 2026 when they sack him inevitably for lying. That's yeah, when right. that's going to be. Yeah, Drag or way bit. before that. I mean, just to say, he's even broken the rules of that job because you're meant to get approval for any job you take after leaving office. For two years after leaving office, you have to get approval. And he sought approval 30 minutes before he announced this job. And it's a massive security <laughs> risk because he was prime minister nine months ago and now he's writing for a national newspaper. Right. That's a security risk. Okay, but that was like seven prime ministers ago. <laughs> That's, That's right. true. Whatever. That is true. Everything has changed so much since you. And it's not like he was paying attention. So he doesn't know what's coming right, down yeah, the line exactly, in terms right. of you know, laws and uh, regulations. He wasn't he used to be like a stuff. monarch. Wasn't he king, I think? <laughs> <laughs> and in bribe scribe jibe news, nobody else is having any more luck defending Trump than Tucker Carlson or Kevin McCarthy, so instead of pretending their guy is good, much of the GOP has fallen back on the old standard of pretending the other guy is just as bad. And 
If you make the mistake of listening to any goddamn thing Uncle Frank has to say, you're probably going to hear about that in the form of yet more allegations that Joe and Hunter Biden accepted bribes from Burisma. Uh, Now, you'll recall this allegation from Trump's first impeachment. It was the allegation Trump was trying to strong arm the Ukrainian government into making in exchange for that military aid. But according to the latest iteration of the lie, Trump was doing that despite already having evidence of that crime, including (laughs) recorded audio of Joe Biden committing it. Playing coy. (laughs) I guess, yeah. Now, and, and this isn't coming from some fucking random brainless conspiracy theorist nut jobs, by the way. It's coming from brainless conspiracy theorist nut jobs in Congress. Yeah. Again. Again, yeah. they're doing right. that again. Yeah, yeah. It already came from the idiots in Congress a while ago, but they needed something loud and shiny to jingle for Uncle Frank this week. And they had nothing. So they were like, jingly ibid. Huh? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> ibid jingly. Huh? You want to go out, Jimmy? <laughs> So here's a thought. Have you guys thought of appointing fewer conspiratorial idiots to Congress? Because, mm. like, at least in the UK, in UK democracy, RMPs only turn into conspiracy theorists once they're in office. But the fact that they believe stuff that isn't true, that shouldn't be their campaign strategy or a successful yeah. campaign strategy at that. <laughs> oh, God. Have you thought? I, I live in the state that gave us Marjorie Taylor Green, Marsh. I think yikes. about that. I have to get lotion when I think about that, okay? <laughs> so, so the latest go at this dead horse began on May 3rd when Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley and Kentucky Representative James Comer issued a press release with the following headline, quote, Grassley at Comer demand FBI record alleging criminal scheme involving then VP Biden, end quote. And basically, so they're they're running a play that goes, the truth is written on his balls. Why won't he show us the truth? Right. (laughs) They're alleging that there's a there's top secret information that suggests Biden's a crook. And they're demanding that the FBI just show everybody all their top secret stuff to prove that it's not there. And then when the FBI refuses, they pretend that that's evidence that there really is some damning thing that Biden is covering up. Yeah. And speaking of which. I asked the FBI about Chuck Grassley hunting orphans in a hedge maze. Not a word in response, like all (laughs) redacted. (laughs) Now, uh, interesting. I should say there is a real allegation at the heart of this thing. It's an allegation that was made by a foreign intelligence asset, which is a big part of the reason the FBI doesn't want to post that shit on Twitter. Um, Now, eventually and reluctantly, they did agree to let senators view a redacted version of the report. Right. But to be fair, that's only because the only unredacted copy of the report is currently lying on top of a box next to a spare toilet roll in the Mar-a-Lago bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so right. It's all they had. Okay, but to be clear, they've seen the balls now. The balls were even yeah, shown right. to some people and they're like, but show us the the fold under the wrinkle or whatever. Exactly right. Yeah, we didn't even see the taint. But but all it said, no, all this proved was that there was an allegation. There was no evidence offered that it was true. Right. The specific allegation is that Burisma paid five million dollars to Joe Biden and another five million to Hunter in exchange for Biden's complicity in a cover up Uh, five million dollars, by the way, that the GOP led Congressional Oversight Committee can find no evidence of, despite the fact that digging through Hunter's bank records seems to be their full time fucking job at this point. Yeah, that's all they're doing. They found nothing. These are people who do evidence like. Uh, blind guy sniffed out Hunter Biden at a strip mall computer store yes, in fucking right. Delaware, and that's, <laughs> that's definitely standard. real. They can't even come up with a very obvious lie for this one like that. I mean, so that's true, but look, that's just the price of high office. If Hunter Biden didn't want people going through his whole life with a fine-tooth comb, he should never have had a father, I guess. Right, I guess yeah, that's right. the only thing yeah, he could have done. It's, it's, it's own you. damn that's fault. Now, and in case random unsourced allegations that the FBI clearly didn't think were credible enough to follow up on wasn't dismissible enough for you already, I should point out that there is every reason to believe that this complaint was brought to the FBI by none other than Rudy Four Seasons Giuliani (laughs) at precisely the same time the CIA was warning all their intelligence officials that Giuliani had been compromised and was likely peddling Russian propaganda. Right. In, in fact, Bill Barr actually assigned a dude whose whole fucking job was to vet allegations coming from Russian sources because there was such a flood of useless misinformation pouring out of the Kremlin at the right. time. Right. Because of Giuliani. Yes. We had like a Giuliani correction guy. Yes. Hired, <laughs> dedicated. Yeah. And just a reminder, the director of the FBI, Christopher Ray, is a Republican who got picked by Donald yes. Trump. 
So these idiots in Congress are asking for stuff. And Ray keeps explaining like, yeah, I'd love for Joe Biden to be guilty here, I guess. But Giuliani turned every bit of intel we get into fucking Spartacus. It's just like, oh, Spartacus, <laughs> Spartacus. Yeah, right. that's all we have. And also, I should point out, by the way, that the interview where this allegation was made happened in 2020. Trump was still president then. So Grassley and Comer's roundabout allegation is that Trump's Justice Department was politically motivated by a future president, despite the fact that their boss was so desperate for any allegation against Biden that he was willing to fucking bribe Ukraine for one. Okay, but now I'm picturing like future Joe Biden arriving back in time naked in one of those Terminator blue bubble things. <laughs> I need your clothes, your boots, and none of your malarkey. That's, that's, that's in my head. <laughs> So now, in in what can only be a deliberate effort to distract from the latest Trump indictment, Grassley and Comer have upped the ante very publicly of their allegations by now suddenly claiming that there are audio recordings of Biden agreeing to the bribe or otherwise admitting to the crime. And this is being repeated as fact by pundits and politicians, despite the fact that at best, they're saying that the same guy who told Rudy Melton scalp Giuliani this bullshit also said there were tapes, which which, of course, this guy failed to provide. Next headline from The New York Post. Deaf guy could taste that Joe Biden was on a disc man that he was repairing <laughs> in a Delaware strip. Well, CD redacted. What are they hiding? The New York Post. Jesus well, Christ. of course, I'm sure Twitter will cover it up. Now, of course, the actual <laughs> allegation is so thin that even a softball interview on Fox News couldn't help but tear through it. When a Fox News host asked Grassley if the FBI document was damning for Biden, he sheepishly admitted, quote, there's accusations in it, but it's not for me to make a judgment about whether those accusations are accurate or not, end quote. <laughs> Now, and likewise, when Comer was interviewed on Newsmax, the host asked if the audio recordings were legit, to which Comer was only willing to say, quote, we don't know if they are legit or not, end quote. So evidence that may or may not be legitimate may or may not exist, that Biden may or may not have done something that may or may not have been wrong, which is why it's perfectly OK for Trump to keep nuclear fucking launch codes in his shower or whatever. This whole thing is just big question mark. That's what that's all they did. They yep, were just yeah. like, question mark? Yeah. Yeah. Biden? <laughs> really? Question mark. Biden. All right. And next up in headlines, Trump supporters are buying Trump bucks from online scammers <laughs> and losing all their money because that's nothing and because God wants me to be happy personally. <laughs> of course. Okay. Of course, scamming people out of money is bad. However, however, some people support Donald Trump and the morality rules of the universe go away yep, at that point for those sure people. Sure do. <laughs> All that's left is the comedy rules and those are very clear about this. This is objectively hilarious and amazing. Yes, according to the comedy rules, sometimes two wrongs can make a right if the funnier wrong is fucking the evil or wrong hard enough. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> that's like the first rule. Yeah, exactly. And a big thanks to Nick for sending the link. Love this one. Skepticratnews at gmail.com if you want to help out. Wait, so you're saying that if people send news tips to skepticratnews at gmail.com, <laughs> really? the company will officially buy a bunch of Trump books and persuade Eli <laughs> to accept them as salary? <laughs> yeah, this is no, actually, the first yeah, time that an interjection there was absolutely <laughs> accurate. Cool. So here's how I became very, very happy about a crime. Donald Trump's followers still think he won the 2020 election, of course, and they congregate on conservative-friendly social media sites to cry about it. The sites have names like Truth Social at the top, <laughs> but uh, if you look closely, it also says, we're idiot boomers who don't know how the internet works. Please don't scam yep. us. Please, please don't, because we'll definitely <laughs> fall for it. So naturally, companies like Patriots Dynasty and Patriots Future and USA Patriots <laughs> started selling... Trump bucks to these idiots. The bucks are advertised as a great way for real patriots to support the 2024 campaign of Donald Trump. Oh, God, and the ads are so good. Heath put a link to one of the ads in, in the show notes here, listeners. It is amazing. It's it's narrated by John, who promises that he's real, but it's clearly an automated voice of a so fake, he may as well <laughs> yeah. have introduced himself as the John Bot 3000. Oh, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's like a goddamn <laughs> ransom call or something. I actually, I, I cut out a clip that I think... <laughs> 
perfectly encapsulates the entire four minute pitch in 15 seconds. So Heath, I, I provided that for you in the notes. Beautiful. What are TRB golden checks and cards plus diamond bucks? People who love Donald Trump and want his work to prolong in the presidency can purchase these checks in honor to honor to the great president of America by purchasing the US dollar designed TRB golden check. <laughs> it's just like that. It's just nice. that yeah. the entire 100%. fucking time. <laughs> so the key to the Trump bucks, it's the new monetary system that Donald Trump's going to fire up once he gets back into the White House. Most people don't know about this or know about the power of the president to shut down the U.S. dollar and switch to coins with his face on it. <laughs> and that's the key. He's going to start the Trump rebate banking system or TRB. And that's when your Trump bucks are going to skyrocket in value. You know, when supply goes up, the price goes up. It's basic econ 101. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if you call in the next 10 minutes, you can get the coins with the Trump face. You can get the TRB passport handbook thing. And you can get a golden check with corkboard accents on it. Now, just to be clear, it's not a check to you. <laughs> it's, it's just a blank check. There's a blank spot to write a number of Trump bucks dollars, but nowhere to write a recipient. So I don't know. Maybe you just pin a little note onto the corkboard part. That's the method. <laughs> These types of checks it is not clear. And yeah, they, they, they actually offer an increasingly desperate list of things that you can do with it in the ad, right? Like they're like, you can display it or give it to other people. I honestly <laughs> expected them at a certain point to be like, and if you've got schmutz under your nails and the file is all the way across the room, you can <laughs> fold one of these bad boys in half. Sometimes you can use the corner for your teeth, yeah, but then right, if right. that gets soft because of the saliva, you can make a fold yep. on a different part and then you can get, <laughs> it's a good way to do it. So yeah. One of the most popular products that they're doing over at the Patriot whatever is a $10,000 diamond Trump bucks bill. Oh, wow. That's, that which sounds you can valuable. get for just <laughs> one easy payment of $99.99 in wow, real American great, great dollars. Deal. Yeah. And according to the ad. <laughs> I can't can afford re- not to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. According to the ad, you can redeem that bill for 10000 real dollars at any major bank or... Fine retailers like yes. Walmart, Costco, and Home Depot. <laughs> and here's my favorite part. People bought these things. Like a bunch of people bought mm-hmm, these things. Mm-hmm. And clearly walked into Walmart or Bank of America <laughs> yes. with a giant fucking smile on their face being like, I'll take my $10,000 now, please. Here you go. Just waving it triumphantly. And that was usually followed by... What? And then an employee being handed the Monopoly money with Trump's face on it and then weeping with laughter at the person who had been triumphant a moment ago. NBC News spoke with a bunch of these people, including a guy named John Amon, who spent 2200 real dollars oh, on Jesus. Trump bucks and then literally walked into his local bank expecting to be handed $220,000. He was not. He did not get that money. And what's amazing about all of this is that it even says in the ad that the checks, quote, cannot be used as a store of value, unquote, and that it, quote, is exclusively used as memorabilia and not for investment, end quote. So they were so confident that they could scam people that they told people it was a scam right in their ads. But at least it does go on to say, you know, that the checks can only be used to present gifts to other Trump supporters, which is true in the sense that they can't stop you giving these things away to other yeah. idiots. They can't stop <laughs> right, that. Right. Well, to, yeah, but to be clear, the ad also talks about a membership card that was, quote, issued by Donald Trump to allow Trump bucks holders to use Trump bucks as legal tender and deposit them in banks such as J.P. Morgan Chase, the Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, end quote. That's right before it lists all the retailers. And in a frightening testament to how confident they really were, the final words of that ad were, quote, Make sure and don't get scammed by frauds. And <laughs> yeah. don't get scammed Yikes. by frauds. Like like this fraud. Like like when we told you that we're doing fraud here. Yes. That this is yes. a scam. Don't get scammed by this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you're reading this, fuck <laughs> woof. Yeah. <laughs> and seriously, like Bank of America, some spokesperson from them got interviewed by NBC about this, and they were like, "Yeah, a bunch of this happened. A bunch oh. of people showed up, and our employees are like, what?" 
<laughs> what are you talking about, dude? I mean, they have to send money people that away. Would have gone to the Trump campaign otherwise. I just can't feel bad for those people. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's objectively a good. Yep. I would say yep. on on I think balance. You're right. So it looks like Trump wasn't personally involved in this particular scam that we know of. But let's not forget that he is involved in selling NFT trading cards of himself. Yep. He released a batch in December and then another one in April. And according to Trump, in that second round, he sold out in six hours for a total of $4.6 million in sales. And then he bragged about it on Truth Social. He posted, a great honor, and I hope everyone is happy, healthy, and wealthy, which would be literally impossible in terms of those nfts considering they lost 60 percent of their value within a day oh Jesus. and now they're down about 75 percent well you didn't, right but you could get 10 times that in trump box <laughs> right yeah that that's how you make your money back that's the key <laughs> double down and in case anyone's curious i tried to find a way to short the nft market of trump shit or short the trump buck but that's sadly not readily available yet. There's a site called Dive, D-Y-V-E, that's working on shorting NFTs, but their address ends with .xyz, mm. so, so I decided to let it go. <laughs> but you, you could like go out of your way to like try to borrow them and then get them, but it, it's hard to short it. It's yeah. hard to short it right now. And finally tonight, in like and recheat news, it's it's been eight months since Elon Musk bought Twitter.com, and things are going just swimmingly. Site traffic <laughs> is way down, way down, but the number of users who've got green frogs and swastikas as profile pictures, that's way up. Huh. And the amount of hate speech on the platform has also never been higher. So, you know, as long as those were the KPIs, things are absolutely peachy right now. Oh, and they were. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, Twitter is now valued at just $15 billion, so it's worth about a third of what Musk paid for it nine months ago because he is a business genius. <laughs> right. It's doing no. better than those Trump NFTs. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's fair. But but it's actually worse than it sounds because of inflation. Um so let's see. So since <laughs> since Musk bought it, Twitter's just been dangerously ambling along on a hastily assembled and poorly thought out autopilot, bumbling its way on a buggy algorithm, crashing <laughs> every time it encounters an unfamiliar <laughs> obstacle. I say, it feels like it could be a metaphor for something. I just I can't imagine what, but we'll keep it on the back burner. <laughs> Uh, Truth social, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so that said, the only thing to have sunk faster than the stock price of Twitter <laughs> is the platform's credibility. Mm. Yeah, let that sink in. <laughs> <laughs> so case in point, the promoted ad that I was served this week, which features a black and white photo of the celebrity chef Gino de Campo, uh, along with a heartfelt tribute and a link to an apparent obituary in The Guardian. Uh, it reads, parting is always difficult. Uh, Twitter user at Mallory Howard wrote, yet we take comfort knowing that Gino lived a fruitful and noteworthy life leaving an enduring legacy of love, gentleness, and compassion. Oh, fruitful, because he's a chef. That's good stuff. I like that. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like a totally real person with human noun and verb talking on there. Um, <laughs> at underscore Mallory Howard. Really, you started with an underscore? <laughs> And the thing is, if, it, if you think it seems strange that random Twitter user Mallory Howard would pay Twitter in order to promote to 300,000 users their own touching eulogy for a TV chef, congratulations, you don't work in Twitter's ad department, who didn't <laughs> seem to look into this at all. Despite the fact that Gino De Campo is, and I cannot stress this enough, very much not dead. The guy's well, alive. <laughs> So a, a sporting obituary gives you a head start, Marsh. <laughs> Such a weird lie. It is Why weird. would you start with the guy who's oh, alive? It gets weirder. Because the thing is, I'm a curious sort of guy. So I thought I'd try and figure out what was going on here. And so I, I clicked on the ad and I found myself at a site that was undeniably kind of like the Guardian's website. Uh, it yeah. had the Guardian logo. It even had a byline to the Guardian's tech reporter, a guy called Alex Hearn. But this wasn't the Guardian website. I'd actually been sent to a site whose address was, and again, this feels kind of important, the address was musknews.sbs. <laughs> and by the way, I saw that. I checked musknews.com is available. Oh, wow. They just preferred the dot side-by-side -side <laughs> suffix. What the fuck? And it gets even weirder because this article that was meant to be an obituary was actually titled Bank of England sues Gino de Campo for what he said on live TV. And 
unless they sued him to death, this isn't an obituary. <laughs> yeah, right. Or at the very least, it's, it's a very roundabout one. Yeah. yeah, really puts the berry in bury the leaves. Because <laughs> dead. So uh, apparently, according to this article, De Campo was appearing live on the Graham, Graham Norton show, a BBC One talk show, uh, when he let slip that he has made a lot of money through various investments. Uh, a revelation which was so worrisome to the Bank of England that they immediately called up the BBC and demanded that the show be taken off air right now. Come which on. would make sense if De Campo <laughs> had been on the Graham Norton show recently, which he hadn't, huh. or if the show was even broadcast live, which yeah. it isn't. <laughs> Or Come if the show on. has been broadcast since March, which it hasn't because it's been <laughs> off air between series. But other than that, this starts to make some sense. Oh, God, it's literally an article about DeCampo accidentally letting slip that one simple <laughs> yeah. trick. Yeah. Do not call in the next 10 minutes. We are giving away these timeshares of <laughs> NFTs. It is killing us. We are getting bankrupted. Do not try to buy our thing right now. So very, very The literal obviously. sketch from SNL. Unbelievable. <laughs> So very, very obviously, this is just a big scam. But it's one that Twitter was very happy to take ad revenue from. And it's just cartoonishly scammy. You know, the article claims to be a verbatim transcript of this conversation, which definitely never happened. And it includes De Campo explaining that the crypto trading platform that he uses is, quote, a 100% perfect solution for those who want to get rich quickly. <laughs> to which Graham Norton responds, quote, sounds really good and legit, end quote. <laughs> And you know, it's noun, kind verb, of, regular, human. It's it's that kind of warm, natural conversation that's really made Norton's chat uh -huh. show so watchable over the years. He just <laughs> oozes affable charm. He really does. Those are true words, Marsh. Sorry, I'm trying to learn from the master <laughs> that is Graham. Sorry, what's good and legit? Bitcoin. Dot <laughs> I'm Graham <laughs> Now, a lot of people might have left it there. But I am not most people. So I thought I'd check out this platform, which is called Immediate Connect. I thought I'd check this out for myself. So I <laughs> clicked the link to Immediate Connect in the article, um, which immediately took me to a site called Immediate Edge. I'm sure that's fine. That's close enough. <laughs> Roughly the same. Um, there was a form there where you can sign up. So I, I, I put in my name and I, I put in my real phone number, at which point it registered me for their platform, which is called Bitwest, which isn't Immediate Connect or Immediate Edge, nope. but I'm sure that's all fine. That's not a problem. There it is. So I feel like like some listener that didn't understand why we love you gets it now, right? <laughs> yeah. It, I love this. It escalates so fucking quickly. So professional scam wrangler Michael Marshall just shines a laser pointer on the wall of the internet for a second and like 5,000 liars all smash their heads diving at the same <laughs> spot like cats. Oh, it's 100%. 100 percent. So, so i hit and it submit. will escalate from there yeah yep. it's great it's great I, I hit submit and all i had to do was wait for a call that would complete my registration which came two minutes after i clicked apply i barely had time to Yikes. open up my recorder before i was suddenly speaking wow. to a guy apparently called thomas who absolutely assured me he was based at bitwest's london hq and that he just needed me to send him 210 pounds so i could get started trading okay I mean, um, that's a real name and a place and a number. It's very Those real. Are all it's, real. It's all and I like checking that out. they added the 10, right? Like the 210, because 200 just sounds scammy. That would sound fake. Exactly. That would sound fake. Exactly. Um, so I was pretty interested. So I, I just thought I'd check. You know, you can't be too careful. So I just asked him what the address was for the London office that he mm -hmm. was sat in. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, <laughs> after a long pause, he said, well, I can give you the postcode. <laughs> Which is a bit what? weird that he could only give you the zip yeah, code no, of the building he's in. You, where, you, where you work. Yeah, and he gives me the postcode. It's like E1W1AW. And I said, oh, yeah, I know that. Isn't that in Farringdon, which is a part of London? And he said, yeah, that's right. Um, except it isn't. He's nowhere near Farringdon. He's literally like an hour's <laughs> walk away from Farringdon. Um, at which point I asked him why he seemed so confused about where the building that he was currently sat in was located <laughs> in the city in which he's that in. That is weird. Uh, he, he did not like that. Uh, we chatted for a little while long, but eventually he told me that he's getting fed up and that he's sick of my sneaky questions. He said I was Whoa. being sneaky. Uh, he told me that I was not a serious person and that he deals with annoying calls like me all day. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Sneaky question like, where are you? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry, bro, but so many people accuse me of being a scam every day isn't the defense that you think it is <laughs> no <laughs> and he got tripped up on the easiest fucking one right just name an object you can see right now sir how about that and he was like v void of outer space <laughs> 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 space so hat 
<laughs> so I was I was worried that my chance to invest in this crypto trading platform was gone. But luckily, I didn't have to wait long for my next opportunity because an hour later, uh, I'd barely even got done reading about Bitwest uh, when I got the next phone call. I'd spent the hour looking for information about Bitwest. Um, all I'd found was a warning from the Financial Conduct Authority, uh, which read, quote, this firm may be providing financial services or products without our, our authorization. You should avoid dealing with this firm and beware of potential scams. Um, so when I got the second phone call, this time from someone called Haley, despite her Polish accent, she's definitely called Haley. Um, I asked her why the FCA, the regulator of financial advisors in the UK, are calling her business a scam. At which point she said, quote, well, it says it may be a potential scam, not that it definitely is a definite scam, which wasn't as reassuring as she expected. So you're saying there's a chance. Listen, so we're not a scam until you murder a cat with radioactive poison, technically. If you think, are you... Are you a cat killer? You kill cats, is what you're saying. So even at this point, I pushed back and said, come on, Haley, that sounds ridiculous. At which point she explained that the FCA, the regulator of financial advisors in the UK, is run by the government. And the government only like to look after the establishment. So that's why they want to crush crypto traders, because it's so independent and gives people access to riches that the government can't get a cut of. Uh, and I said, it sounds like you're saying it's a bit like a protection racket from the mafia. To which she said... Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All a scam by big accountability. <laughs> so maybe Haley's right. You know, maybe the FCA is part of a government plan to crush the little independent crypto traders, <laughs> the ones who set up fake Guardian websites and pay to put out ads with fake obituary <laughs> to lure people in. Mm -hmm. Or guy. maybe Twitter just doesn't give a fuck whose money they'll accept and doesn't care whose scams they promote. Yeah, but I can see how Twitter thought it was legit, though. I mean... Underscore Mallory has a blue check mark. Oh, that's, well, that's, that's that incredible, is, mm, right? Yeah. Um, this stuff is so, so prevalent on Elon Musk's Twitter. In researching for this investigation, I saw at least three other accounts sharing the exact same fake obituary for Gino de Campo, totaling over a million views, like a million people it had been sent to. Plus, there were other promoted tweets for fake orbits, fake obituaries for Gordon Ramsay, Jamie Oliver, and Wayne Rooney. The views for these ads that I saw was over a million, so Twitter is almost certainly making some decent money from this scam. And the scammers are probably making big money out of this too. I dug around to see what kind of scam this was, and I came across a BBC investigation into exactly this scheme. Maybe not from the same organisation, but if not, it's an organisation doing exactly the same thing. And the BBC described it as a billion dollar scam because of how much money it's taken from around the world. Wow. Bill, billion dollar scam, by the way, the, uh, the Skeptocrat investigation into Twitter called Elon Musk the same thing. So. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they must be making huge money. They have enough money to be paying a call center that responds within two minutes, gets called out by you on being an obvious fraud, and then has a second person follow up on that, you know, now warm lead yeah. an hour yeah. later. Which means that business plan is working on people. Not yeah. you, but definitely working. That follow-up call was reassuring to some number of people. Yep. Oh, 100%. Since I signed up, they've called me 14 times. Uh, what? Most of them, what? Most of them don't go through. Most of them, they hang up before I answer. On one of them, they did answer, and I started recording it, and I asked them who they worked for and who owned the business and whether it was a company called the Milton Group, which is the one from the BBC investigation, at which point she said yes. And I said, really, you're part of the Milton huh. Group? And she went, no. I was like, what, what is this then? Are you part of the Milton Group or not? And she just hung up. So Schrodinger's Milton. We will yeah. never know whether they're part of the Milton Group. And oh, this is how prevalent this stuff is on Twitter these days. Just to round this out with a ludicrous and faintly ironic twist, I wrote about all of this in a big, long, viral Twitter thread. That's still available on my Twitter if you go and search this out. Um, and when I wrote about it, Twitter found and suspended the original scam account. There's Mallory. Mallory's gone now. To which... I reported on, as, I, as it was happening, as I was tweeting, and said, the, the scam account has now been suspended. But I soon discovered that if you say the words account and suspended in the same tweet, you immediately trigger yet another Twitter scam. Oh, where Christ. literally a dozen bot accounts will tell, uh, contact you telling you that, oh, it's really bad that you locked out of your account. But that happened to me, and I contacted obvious scammer number 257, mm -hmm. and they couldn't lock it for me. And so... 
Obviously, I did that. Obviously, I found <laughs> obvious gamma two five seven. I ended up talking to them on uh, on Telegram, and before I knew it, I was negotiating with a literal Nigerian scammer around the price of unlocking the Instagram account that I don't actually have. Oh man, <laughs> Twitter is a fucking scam fractal at this point, and people are still emailing me to insist that Musk is actually playing the long game here, and you just don't know. You just Absolutely, don't are you, seriously, ten thousand tiny little fractal cats just smashed into the original five thousand yeah. to try to sell Marsh on getting back an account that doesn't exist. I could not. Marsh sent me this thread. I'm weeping with laughter. And then it kept escalating. And then this final thing, I couldn't deal. It's so good. <laughs> Check out that thread if you have it. And the thing is, you ha- what you've got to bear in mind through all of this is that Elon Musk's whole rationale for in- introducing his you can pay me to prove that you're legit strategy was to combat bots and yes! scammers. Right? You know, according to Musk, right. charging people to use Twitter is the only way to protect us from scams. But the scammers don't care about spending a few dollars on Twitter if Twitter is then going to introduce their scam to hundreds of thousands of potential victims. That's just a cost of doing business at that point. Elon Musk is not actually trying to stop the scammers. He just wants to make sure that if they're going to use Twitter to dupe people out of their life savings, they remember to send him his cut. Yep. That's it. God damn it. Okay, but the Trump bucks thing was fun. You know, that one was fun. Idiots. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Michael Marshall. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Jack Moss, Matt Griggs, Kagan Lovelace, Don't Use Good Yarn on Bad Conspiracies, Josh Haberman, Evidence Monkey, Kayla S., Nick Ray 29, Maddie Carmaine, Shirty Bear, HS from Israel, Kevin, Jimmy Neiman, Chris Nelson, Jane Gordon, Danielle Hart, Jen Lytle, Phil Holt, Jasmine Lamoureux, and Kristen Reimer, whose beautiful dicks and vaginas could sell Bitcoin future futures back to bitwest.mustnews.sbs with nothing but a charming wink. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Skating Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check them out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.